Welcome everyone to the Haven Podcast. We are your hosts, Rishi Aurora, Abby Misrani, and Ella Smith Warwick. Today we are joined by a special guest, Rama Matada, Hayden's head boy, who will be helping us understand the topic of today's podcast later on. As always, this episode contains sensitive topics and advise that people who are over 15 listen. And if you would like to discuss any issues regarding the topic of this episode, please contact the safeguarding team or talk to your form teacher. So today's episode, we're going to be discussing anxiety, which is another very common mental illness. It's defined as a feeling of unease, worry or fear, and it's not one linear feeling within everyone. It can be mild anxiety or even severe anxiety. And everyone feels anxious from time to time. It can usually come about in stressful situations or when a deadline is looming over you, it can happen for anyone in any scenario. It can cause you to feel sweaty and shaky, short of breath, your heart can race. And other than that, it can also cause changes in your behavior. So you may start to become a lot more careful within what you do. You may be a lot more wary of things that usually you wouldn't be like, like walking down the street. You may start to be more anxious about even doing something such as that. And you may avoid things that usually trigger your anxiety. There isn't one primary cause of anxiety. Uh, Some of the most common are stress from work, school, personal relationships, emotional trauma, stress due to a chronic or serious middle condition and many more. These are just the tip of the iceberg. There are some physical symptoms as well which can include fast, irregular or more noticeable heartbeat, lightheadedness feelings or dizziness, headaches, chest pains and loss of appetite. There are also mental symptoms, which include nervousness, tension, inability to relax, worry about past and present, tearful feelings, and an inability to sleep. There can also be a change in behaviour, which includes not enjoying leisure time, difficulty looking after yourself, difficulty concentrating at work, struggling to form and maintain relationships, and worrying over trying new things. I think a lot of these have been like a lot more evident to people because we've all known about it but I feel like especially with Covid and everything that's happening a lot of people have started to notice these symptoms with themselves a lot more like I know I've noticed a lot of these in myself but I feel like it's important to know that just because you may be experiencing a few of these symptoms it doesn't necessarily mean you have severe anxiety you because the feelings of anxiousness isn't the same as having the mental illness of anxiety so I feel like it's an important distinction to remember feelings of anxiousness alongside the actual mental illness of anxiety. So now we're going to move on to some questions for our guest today. So Raman, as someone who does have anxiety, what were the first symptoms you experienced and can you explain like how it came about and what happened to you? Yeah, so I think anxiety really happens from a really young age. We really don't know it's going to happen, but it does happen all the time. It may be a school performance. It may be talking in front of your class. It can happen absolutely anywhere, even doing this podcast. And for me, it really started in around year eight. And obviously in school, we don't really learn about it until we're in an advanced age in year nine, year 10, year 11. So I didn't really know it was happening. Um, And I was kind of getting bullied at the time. So it was quite difficult for me to really understand what was going on. Um, I lost a couple of family members. So it really, really affected me. And then we move on to year nine. And I just noticed myself not being myself. I was just losing control of myself. I wasn't able to sleep, not being able to relax. I just had a load of panic attacks all the time. And I just thought one day, this isn't normal. This isn't like me. So for me, it was about how could I change what I'm doing and unfortunately I didn't do that I just kept going on with everything pretended like everything was normal didn't tell anyone and it really affected me so I think the number one thing for me was I really wish I would tell people because I wouldn't tell my best mate I wouldn't tell any of my friends not even my family so telling people is so important in these situations and I think it's really overlooked yeah so what methods did you use or do you use now to help you cope with your anxiety and have you had any treatment for it yeah so later down the years in year 10 year 11 for around two or three years i uh when underwent cognitive behavior therapy which was cbt 
and it aims to improve mental health um, and it's basically talking about your problems and how to change your problems and yeah for two or three years I've been doing that and it's only just last year that um, I stopped um, but the therapy gave me quite a lot of coping mechanisms like you've asked which is important because you always feel like you're anxious all the time um, listening to music is a really really good one I'm not talking about songs with lyrics i'm talking about really calming music and for me that is one of the most important things yeah that's really good like i know from like other people i know who have anxiety the whole idea of the music just even if you don't listen to it, like classical music it's probably one of the most relaxing things to listen to or just putting on your laptop or your phone and just having it there just some like jazz music just anything without lyrics that's calm because having that in the background, not necessarily like listening to that by itself, just while you're doing work or something, I think that's very relaxing and that in turn can help you a lot. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It really, really helps. Um, I had another question for you. Yeah. So you've done this therapy and although you said it took a long time because loads of people, they may have a few weeks of therapy and they won't see the benefits of it and they may get... Um, angry possibly would you say that it was worth having to go three years for therapy would you say it's worth having to wait that long it's a really good question um i i was uh, admitted to hospital because i was feeling very suicidal um and that point in my life i was just anxious i was depressed all the time and how anxiety and depression work is when you have really high anxiety, you have really, really bad depression and it works all the way around. So I was admitted to CAMS. Um, it took about six weeks to finally get some sort of therapy. Um, I, I know there's a really, really long waiting list for CAMS. It's such a like demanding service at the moment and it's such an important one and we actually overlook it sometimes. Um, but do I think it was worth it? Yes. Um, I know quite a lot of people who gave up with it for only doing it for a couple of weeks and obviously it took a long time but I do think it paid off you definitely gain a lot out of it I think one thing so I looked in for my EPQ I looked into CBT and anxiety and like how helpful it was and one thing that I found through that was that how important it is the relationship with like the patient and the therapist because like if you don't trust the person then how can you like let them help you? So would you be able to tell us a bit about that and how that helped you or kind of prevented you a bit? Yeah, so the therapist is always, every single one I've ever had has always been absolutely joyous and makes you have a really positive impact and outlook on life. Um, I remember my first one and she was just trying to get me to see the positives because for me, I was always seeing the negatives. And we uh, you guys have touched on it about you know exam stress and things like that and it's it affects you a lot and i don't think us as a society talk about it as much as we should um anxiety is just on the rise every single day it has no sign of stopping so the therapists really really do help and it, it has that connection i think that's like especially pivotal not necessarily with a therapist and patient relationship but any relationship in which you feel safe and comfortable with someone yeah. it's so important to talk to them if you've got these feelings because yeah. like you said you could you didn't you weren't able to tell anyone about these issues but i feel like it's so important even just to let someone know that you're not okay not even telling them all your issues just letting them know you're not okay is the first step in the right direction even if it's not a significant step because any anything that can lead to positive change should be done and i feel like that's so important making sure you let people know like people who you love who you're comfortable with to just let them know that things are wrong and that also remember that what you're feeling now isn't going to happen forever things can change it's just you have to make the active decisions to allow that change to happen definitely because like the more you bottle it up the more it's going to spiral like it gets progressively worse because as it is you're feeling so drained and emotional but to actually deal with it by yourself and not kind of have a support network around you can just make it that much harder 
yeah. I think society as well needs to start normalizing being able to speak out and be able to say how you're feeling and get rid of this stereotype of especially like with men and their mental health having to stay strong not being able to speak about it I think with men's mental health it does need to be spoken about more because yes the statistics show that women suffer with mental health more but that doesn't mean that men don't it, it's an equal playing field everyone needs to have their chance to speak out about it yeah I definitely agree that like although it's becoming more uh, not so much popularized but more understood men mental health can be more understood it's not as understood and spoken about as it should be it's being recognized but it's not being dissected and looking at the core and I definitely like people should be doing like taking active stances to try and understand more like this podcast we as a group are trying to not only inform others but also inform ourselves when it comes to planning these podcasts and I feel like it's a step in the right direction it's like we may have spoken about something today which may have made you think oh anxiety I may know someone who has it let me try and help them even if you don't necessarily have anxiety you may notice these symptoms in others and being able to help others even if you're not necessarily helping yourself is still a good thing to do yeah even in like school and stuff because I know like Roman said like when we were in like year seven eight and nine like we didn't really hear that much about it so like when you said you were experiencing these things you didn't really think much of it until you got a little bit older but I think just like explaining to kids who are younger like that feeling like this is not normal and reach out for help because that message isn't spread enough when you're younger it's almost seen as like a sensitive taboo topic but yeah it shouldn't be like that like we should be able to talk to people no matter how old they are even though it's a sensitive topic they still need to understand it because they could be going through it and not even realizing it i think primary schools at the moment are actually in their curriculum have added relationships to part of their curriculum and now we're seeing it in secondary schools as well we're not having a day of just pshe we're having hours a week just learning about this which is so important and we are finally understanding how important it is exactly in cases of strong levels of anxiety, it is recommended that you see a general practitioner and they will, if necessary, try to advise psychological treatment or prescribe medicine if it's needed. It's a really good um, idea to go if you think you do have severe levels. Like Raman said, like in cases where you may become incapacitated or hospitalised, it is very good to seek out professional help because like sorry to keep coming back to you Ron, but like in your example yeah. it, you sought out professional help in the end and it did help you mm. i think the final message we want people to take away is that like you aren't you aren't alone in this there are hundreds of people out there who suffer the same issues as you and because of that there are people who understand what you're going through and if you are suffering although it may hurt inside to want to talk about it and you want to put it bottle it up it's the worst thing to do you should speak to someone who you trust and who you know will be able to help you and help is always there for those who need it because like i said you're not alone people want to help you no one is out there hoping you fail everyone wants you to succeed and you just have to make sure you take the opportunities to ensure that you do succeed so thank you everyone for listening to today's podcast we hope you all have a good day and thank you, Raman, for joining us and sharing you, your experience with us.